It's game day here, Raider Nation. Can I get an FLAC down in the comments? And if you're not fired up for this week one game, you get the hell out of here. Coming up here today on the Raiders Report, I got five under the radar Raiders that were going to be key parts in getting a dub today. Jim Harbaugh, I know he's had a lot of success in the NFL in the past in college football at Michigan, but I think Antonio Pierce is going to do some special things today with some of these players because you know Devontae Adams, you know Max Crosby, you know those names, but these five players here are going to be guys that maybe don't totally light up the box score, but are going to be key parts in getting a dub today. So this could be a tough one. SoFi Stadium, game gets kicked off at 4.05 Eastern Time. Jeremy Chuggs and I are going to be live at least one hour before kickoff. It's a low-scoring game. The Chargers are favorites, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Give me that bulletin board material. Everybody is doubting the Raiders, and quite frankly, I don't blame them. The Raiders haven't won in Los Angeles since 2020, and guess what? That is changing here today. I also got to give a shout-out to Mount Raider Morse Trivan because last week on the show... Trivan sent in a big donation, and I said, guess what? I'm going to give away a signed Max Crosby jersey today. So if you're not subscribed, if you're not watching our live stream when the Raiders take down the Chargers, you don't have to get a chance. You don't even have a chance to get number 98 signed jersey. Yeah, I said it. You better pull up today. So let's go. Let's get into some of these under-the-radar players. And the first one I got to talk about is Trey Tucker. And when I say Trey Tucker, everybody's going to watch this show and go, I thought you said it's under the radar. For a lot of Raider fans, this probably isn't an under the radar pick. Imagine saying under the radar Raiders over and over again. It's not that easy. But I do think from the NFL media standpoint, for people that don't cover this team, this is a good one to go with. His pre-snap motion, I really think it's going to be important to see where pressure might be coming from. You can't have another game where your offensive line gives up seven sacks. That's what happened to the Raiders last season in SoFi. Also, just Sir Taylor, the nickel corner here for the Chargers, He's not going to be able to hang with Trey Tucker. Like, if I'm the Raiders, if I'm Luke Getze, I'm going to try to figure out a way to do a lot of pre-snap motion, get the ball in his hands, because Trey Tucker, one-on-one -on -one with Taylor, Taylor's going to look like a young baby deer on ice. And if you've never seen it, well, then you didn't grow up in central Pennsylvania. Also, Jesse Minter, he's an aggressive coach, which means that he's going to bring some pressure, which also means that he has the opportunity to get beat deep. I like Tyreek McAllister's speed. I think DJ Turner's going to add a little pre-snap motion. But Trey Tucker, the attention's going to be on Devontae. The attention's going to be on Jacoby Myers. Trey Tucker's going to have himself a very interesting game. Hopefully it results in a big-time play going down the field. Let's go to another player here that I think is an under-the-radar pick. And if I were to do daily fantasy or something like that, which I know you guys know that I do, Alexander Madison is a sneaky, sneaky name to keep in mind. He is the Raiders' best pass-blocking running back. And if the Silver and Black are a little bit worried about Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa getting after the QB like what happened last season seven times, like if Khalil Mack gets one sack and God forbid if he gets another I'm going to start panicking because if I got to watch Mack get another six sack game, it's going to make me sick to my stomach. Zeus is going to be the RB1. They're going to try to pound the rock plenty, but don't be shocked when Madison gets maybe a few extra reps in there because the Raiders are confident in his shotgun pass blocking ability. They're confident in when they go out in 12 personnel if they want to do, you know, maybe a zone read. Madison has a lot of that experience and the best game that he had last season Funny enough, I know it's not with the Raiders, but it was up against the Chargers where he had 25 touches for 125 yards. Zeus will be the RB1, but I think Madison might help out a lot more than what people are willing to realize. Coming up next here on the Raiders board, I got a defensive player to watch out for, but I also know that Raider Nation likes to have a good time on game days, and I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Z-Biotics, because they're here to make sure that we can have a good time and their spots from the nation having a good time as well. I kept hearing about pre-alcohol and wondered what it was actually like. Now that I've tried it, I believe the hype. And with this technology, they will release different products that have nothing to do with alcohol. So stay in the loop and go to zbiotics.com slash chat sports. You can also scan the QR code on screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use Chat Sports at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, 
They'll refund your money, no questions asked. Here's what I do, whether you're, I don't know, having wine with your fiance, maybe casual drinks with your boys, or a Raiders Report watch party. Get my Z-Biotics. That's my first drink of the night. Pre-alcohol shot, basically. Then I have a few sips, maybe a drink. You guys know I like some Fireball, maybe a little uh, mixed in Mezcal in there. And then I wake up the next morning and I feel ready to tackle my day. I'm not lo young like I used to be. I can't bounce back from a Raiders Report watch party like I used to when I was 24. So that's why I trust Z-Biotics and I want you guys to get started with them as well. So head to zbiotics.com slash chatsports and use the code chatsports at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Z-Biotics, for sponsoring this episode of the Raiders Report. And thank you for sponsoring good times here at today's show. Because I'll tell you this right now. If you ever feel when you wake up and you got all that sludge in your stomach and you wake up and you, you just don't feel good, Z-Biotics is going to help you out with that. When you work as much as Chugs and I do, when you're as a diehard Raider fan, and I know as many people watch this show, Z-Biotics is here to help out. Make sure that we have a lot of good times this season, even if the Raiders can't do that. All right, let's get to the next under-the-radar player here. I'm going to go with Adam Butler at defensive tackle. I think I have said maybe 100 times on this show that Adam Butler last season is one of the most underappreciated players on this Raiders defense. And when you look at the Chargers' offensive line from top to bottom, their weak spot is definitely on the interior. I think mainly at right guard center is kind of where, but their entire offensive line interior is weak. The tackles are legit. Butler is good one-on-one -on -one situations. He struggles at times in running downs, which don't get me wrong, against Greg Roman, against this Chargers team, they're going to want to pound the rock. But in situations where they're going to have to chuck the ball, I think Adam Butler, once he gets those one-on-ones, he's going to win more times than not. And that's going to free up then if the Raiders, if, if Butler gets more attention, that's going to free up things for Christian Wilkins. It's going to free up things for Crosby, Malcolm Coons. Adam Butler might not light up the stat sheet, but when he's in the game, I promise you this, shit's going to happen. Let's go to number four here in my list of under-the-radar Raiders players, Isaiah Polamau. And when you have a player that says versatile as Polamau in the way that Patrick Graham uses him, I do think that kind of creates a versatility mismatch that – can't quite be understood. It's only going to be able to be seen. And his versatility is going to be huge in this matchup. For Jim Harbaugh, for Greg Roman, they want to be a physical team that really gets the running game going and then they can complement that with the passing game. And because Paul Mal can play linebacker, strong safety, hell, they've even lined him up in the slot this season at corner. It's going to be hard to read if you're the offensive coordinator for the Charters what exactly the Raiders are planning on doing. And that's exactly what Patrick Graham is going to be doing this season with Epps, with Merrick, but then also that fun player in Isaiah Paul Lamal. So to me, he's going to be a really tough player to understand what the Raiders are going to be setting up, what are they going to be doing. You can line him up near the box, you can drop him back, and no matter where he is at the field, you don't know if he's going to play safety. Is he lining up as a linebacker? Is he going to line up as a corner? Is he going to drop back into coverage in a zone? Or is he going to come after you and go get the quarterback? Isaiah Paul Mal, very sneaky player in this matchup. And then, you know, this is going to be one that chess and checkers a little bit. Tommy Eichenberg, linebacker here. And the reason why I'm going with this one is he hasn't been 100% healthy this offseason. And at the time that I'm making this video, I don't 100% know how much he's actually going to get playing time in this one. But there's one thing that I think everybody would agree with. First off, I got a better mustache. Second, he is an extremely smart football player. Like, you've heard Antonio Pierce talk about it. He's just maybe not an overly athletic guy, but he just always seems to find himself in the right situation. On top of that, if I'm looking at the Raiders roster, there is not a single player on this roster that has played at the University of Michigan. Tommy Eichenberg, Ohio State football player the past four seasons, and I get it. He's gone up against Harbaugh four times. I know some people that are a part of that rivalry. And when it's the biggest rivalry in college football, like there's countdown clocks. When you walk into the Ohio State locker room that say countdown days until Michigan, it is always the game that is just everything is around that game. So when you're a player that is as smart as Tommy Eichenberg, if I'm Antonio Pierce, I want to sit down with Eichenberg and I'm going to say, hey, man, is there any tendencies? Even if that answer is yes, even if that answer is no, Eichenberg to me is going to be that player coach on the sideline because he has the most experience going up against Jim Harbaugh, going up against Minter, the new defensive coordinator. So again, it's a very small detail, 
But in an AFC West rivalry game, in an NFL Week 1 matchup, against two teams that are very equally matched up, something as little as this could be enough to just get a dub. Every inch counts. At least that's what I tell my fiance. So let me know down below, who do I leave off my list here? Because there's plenty of players. Plenty of under-the-radar players that I probably could have gone with. If you want to give me somebody down below, I'm going to be looking. And reminder, you better pull up for Raiders, Chargers, Watch Party. Chugs and I are going to be in North Carolina. Well, when you're watching this video, we're already in North Carolina. Pull up for a chance to win a signed Max Crosby jersey.